The windswept waves of South Africa's Southern Cape indicate that winter has arrived, and winter means shark season. Between Giza Rock and Dyer Island lies a channel known as Shark Alley. Tens of thousands of Cape fur seals have come to give birth to their young. This leads to the densest gathering of great white sharks on the planet, which in turn leads to an ever-growing number of thrill-seeking humans who have come with their hope to see the king of the ocean from the safety of a cage. Most first-timers are not prepared to witness the shocking grace, the calm and calculating movements, and the effortless gliding of what is commonly known as the most feared animal on the planet. Despite dumping blood, chum, and bait into what is already the shark's hunting ground, the animal continues to defy its reputation by carefully investigating the bait before finally deciding to take an investigatory bite. But when the shark does take a bite, the show is definitely worth the wait. The truth is that a large portion of the day is spent waiting. Waiting patiently for the shark to pay attention to our seal-shaped decoys and bait and chum. This shark swims right under my feet without paying me any attention. Again, another opportunity for the shark to take a bite. Instead, I go completely ignored. This is not to say that the shark couldn't inflict massive damage at any time. It could. It's the oldest killing machine on Earth. But what that really means is that the shark knows better than to attack things that are not on its menu. You don't get to be 400 million years old by attacking things that you don't want to eat. Swimming was great white's favorite food. To drive this point home, I've decided to go swimming in Shark Alley, probably the most dangerous place on Earth to attempt such an activity. The team drops me off near Geezer Rock, and I begin to swim with the seals. After surviving on the surface for several minutes, we decide to see what's going on underneath the surface so they bring me the underwater camera, and the view is spectacular. I must admit that the water is deeper than I had hoped it would be. Plenty of room for a patrolling great white to come through. However, other than a few nervous moments when all the seals disappear, I go completely unharmed. In fact, I never even see a shark. Wildlife videographer Lalo Sadi then takes us to a nearby kelp forest. Theory holds that a kelp forest is a safe haven for fur seals and other animals. The explanation is that the wide pectoral fins of the great white shark might become entangled in the kelp, thus causing it to drown. Sure enough, once again, we are not bothered by any sharks. But we do take time to notice just how agile and quick these underwater acrobats are. These seals move in almost any direction, at any time, at incredible speeds. It makes one wonder how a shark actually manages to catch these guys for a meal. And if the seals hide in the kelp all day, what happens once one is actually caught out in the open water with a shark? We were fortunate enough to find out, and it's not what you would think. Look closely. Instead of swimming the other direction as fast as it can, the seal actually stays close to the shark. As long as it knows where the teeth are, there's no chance of an ambush. But this is the ultimate hunter, and eventually we witness the inevitable.
The screams of the seagulls are overpowered by the screams of the tourists, who witnessed a little more of nature than they planned on that day. Conserving energy and avoiding injury, the shark waits until the seal bleeds to death before coming back to finish its meal. Just another example of why it's the perfect hunter. <laughs>